Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. You're watching The Big Picture with me, Frank Rausen Ferreira. A U.S. Congressional Conference report on Tuesday paved the way for waiver to countries such as India from the punitive countering America's adversaries through Sanctions Act or CATSA which is primarily aimed at targeting Russian intelligence agencies and other entities engaged in cyber attacks. The Senate and House Armed Services Committee in a joint conference report to the National Defense Authorization Act of 2019 provided a modified waiver to Section 231 of CATSA. Unlike uh, the existing version of uh, the Act, the proposed modified waiver requires presidential certifications designed to protect U.S. alliances, military operations and sensitive technology, said a media release issued by the Senate Armed Services Committee after the two committees announced details of the conference report. On this edition of The Big Picture, we will analyze the CATSA waiver for India. Joining me on the program today are Ashok Sajanhar, former diplomat, K.V. Prasad, Associate Editor of The Tribune, Shilkan Sharma, former diplomat, and Alok Bansal, Director, India Foundation. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of The Big Picture. Ambassador Sajana, let me begin the program with you. First, let's try and put into perspective, what is CATSA? You know, CATSA is uh, the law that uh, the U.S. Congress had put into position last year, in August 2017. And it came into effect January this year. And basically the focus was, and it's an act by the Congress. So in that sense, the president has uh, not so much of uh, 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 authority over it in terms of, you know, if uh, the president wanted to give some waiver to some countries or to some entities, then the possibilities were very limited. And basically it was that since it was uh, the Congress was convinced that uh, Russia had uh, interfered, had meddled in the elections, in the U.S. presidential elections in 2016. That means some action should be taken against it so that it would, uh, uh, it would hurt those agencies, those uh, uh, organizations from Russia, which had meddled in the election process in the United States. And as a result, it was also mentioned that there would be third countries, other countries who were also dealing with those entities, they would also be put under sanction. So that is what CATSA is. And under that, there are organizations, for instance, how does India come into the picture? Is basically because India is looking at uh, import of at least uh, five systems of S-400, the missile ballistic defense system. And uh, that would be costing about anything between four to five billion dollars. So discussions have been going on as far as this is concerned. And uh, the next uh, annual uh, summit that takes place between India and uh, Russia in October this year, mm. it is expected that this agreement would be signed. Right. So basically the act would have acted against the possibility of India going and uh, buying this defense system for itself and India had said that this is something very critical very crucial as far as our own security is concerned so we will uh, uh, approach the US uh, administration the US government and uh, in a manner what you said uh, just now Frank that uh, uh, as a result of whatever has been done and uh, the Congress has been approached by Secretary of Defense, uh, Secretary Mattis and uh, also Secretary of State uh, Mike Pompeo, right. that they have decided to sort of you know, change the provisions to make it possible for India to also be able to buy these systems without having the impact of sanctions against okay. it. Point taken. Let me bring in K.V. Prasad now. So why the waiver for India and a couple of other countries, K.V. Prasad? Well, I think there's uh, a long-standing understanding that India, if you remember just in the previous administration, India was given a special strategic partnership in terms of defense en engagement, number one. Number two, of course, uh, U.S. does realize that the amount of trade that India does with the United States, uh, especially the military-industrial complex, is quite, quite high. If you look at the figures in the last three years, I think the deals with America surpassed the deals in terms of even dollar trade, far below the Russian. Secondly, the point is uh, James Mattis, the Secretary of Defense, had worked very hard for the last few months trying to reach out to members of the Senate Armed Forces Committee and also across, across the U.S. Uh, House of Representatives to see how best this deal can go through because they do realize that pushing away India from this thing would not really help 
the U.S. has a lot more interest than just this five, uh, in the sense, stopping this five uh, S-400. Uh, S-400. Yeah. Of course, there is a Kamau aircraft uh, helicopter deal that's still in the pipeline. That's in the discussions. There are others. But the fact is the U.S. has already engaged in far more negotiations. And if you really look at the Katsa implication, the big two implication, if at all the sanctions would have been kicked in, they would have largely affected two portions. One was, of course, the investments uh, which were coming in. Mm. Uh, and, of course, also the foreign license, which again means affecting the American domestic defense industry. Right. Uh, Alok Bansal, what does the waiver mean for India? See, the waiver primarily... Uh, at this point of time, mainly affects S-400, which is, of course, uh, the deal that we were signing with the Russians. And uh, here I'd like to say that uh, Katsa is not purely Russia-specific. Mm. It's not Russia-specific, uh, yeah. It is actually, the act is uh, countering America's adversary through Sanctions Act and is specific to three countries, that is North Korea, uh, Iran, and uh, Russia. And when it comes to Russia, it's not only as far as meddling into elections is concerned, it also takes into account Russian intervention into Ukraine and intervention into Syria. And the various activities which are actually under sanctions as per this has, of course, cyber security, petroleum and all those things. And the point which actually affects us is transactions with Russian defense or intelligence sector. And of course, they have also listed uh, uh, Russian citizens who are close and are high net worth individuals w as with proximity to Putin. You know, so that having been said, what kind of a waiver are we looking at? Are we looking at a full waiver? Does this mean the S-400 deal is on the table and we can go through with it? What is it really? So we would ideally want a waiver where we, there is no restriction on as far as India's uh, negotiations with Russia is concerned. And as you know, Raksha Mantri had already said that we have been dealing with Russia for decades. So anything that comes now uh, cannot prevent us from trading. In fact, she had gone to the extent of making a rather more strong statement where she said this is not an UN Act. UN Act. It's a US it's, Act. It's a yeah. US Act. So uh, it has got no meaning for us. So that is it. But we would ideally want to balance, which we have successfully done so for a long time. And we must also understand, as far as President Trump is concerned, he personally is inclined to take a linear view as far lenient view as far as Russia. This is actually an act which is where the parliament is acting tough because they believe that Trump's victory is actually attributable to Russian interference. And uh, that is one of the reasons why Trump has been forced to take a slightly hawkish line on Russia. From our point of view, I think if Russian-American uh, bonhomie, which Trump has been propagating, if it actually comes about is of course the best po because we have a large number of equipment as far as Russian equipment are concerned and even if we don't go for S-400, their maintenance would require a continuous supply of spares, a lot of our equipment actually go abroad for uh, midlife um, uh, upgrades etc. And uh, if you look at Air Force, Navy, Army, I think especially in Air Force you have Sukhois, you have MiG-29s, you have MiGs of various variants and uh, within the Navy you have so many equipment. We have INS Chakra which is actually on lease, a nuclear submarine. So all these equipment, in fact some of these have actually, uh, you, you need certain uh, assistance from Russia to maintain them. So for our point of view, uh, status quo ante as it has been going on, we have been acting with Russians, our equipment go there and we are also friendly with Americans. We uh, have been maintaining a strategic autonomy and I think we have ma successfully managed to convince at least the administration mm, mm. that we should be permitted to continue as right. it is. Now, how do we progress? The Congress has done it for us this time. But I think uh, in Indian lobby is now becoming stronger in US by each passing day. And I think we need to uh, come up with a full-fledged game plan so that we get a complete waiver on it. Okay, talking about the Indian lobby in the United States, Ambassador Shilkan Sharma, uh, does the CATSA waiver mean that India's backdoor diplomacy is working? You know, it is a vindication of uh, the point that uh, we have been maintaining that for the last 15, 20 years, India has had the bipartisan support. So India is good for both parties. So when it comes to the Congress, both Republicans and Democrats uh, are for India. So this Armed Services, um, uh, Armed Services Committee has now recommended it to the Congress. So next step will be the congressional approval of this uh, carve out or waiver as they call it. Uh, and then President's signature. 
and as was explained, uh, President Trump himself has has a different view of Russia. So probably in his own strategic perspective, uh, this is not such a major thing. And if you look at the last two, three years, it is the Congress which has been acting, as was exclaimed, uh, explained, uh, on Russia because of the various factors. Uh, now, for us, the other thing is that uh, this will also, if we succeed, hopefully, then this shows our own strategic uh, dimension is acceptable to the Americans. And the fact that the, the weakening of India, is, as has been reported in newspapers, that uh, uh, a weaker India is not good for American strategy. It is the strategic imperative of Indo-Pacific uh, uh, you know, pivot that these countries like India, Indonesia, when Vietnam, they are secure and stable. Hmm. So the demand for weapon systems for them is actually coming from their security requirements. So the thrust going forward then can we safely say is going to be the Indo-Pacific? Well, uh, the, there are congressional stalwarts who actually still maintain that, uh, that perspective. We have some uh, up and down, uh, you know, and some variation in the last two years because of uh, predilections of President Trump with other mm. things like mm. trade war and uh, you know but this will show that at least the track uh, pro India track continues right and right. it also is another important point is that between US and Russia we have been getting our offensive systems from Russia mm. be that in the Navy or the Air Force what we are getting now from the US are surveillance like the P3 and uh, they haven't yet given now the first... So it's very different. There's no conflict of interest, no, no. really. No, no. And the armed drones is the only thing which, if they agree, then this will be the first time we'll have an attack mm. uh, kind of system. So for a country as large as India, our uh, requirements are both. Sure. And I think uh, this will show that the U.S. understands it. Secretary Mattis has been more understanding of India, mm. uh, you know, in, in the meeting so far. Even about Iran, for instance, uh, about the Chabar, there is a certain measure of, uh, I would say, uh, you know, understanding in right. the U.S. system, not in all of them, because, mm. uh, you know, the Israel, Iran, all that stuff is very, very powerful. Sure. But still, uh, at least the, the previous Secretary of State had said that they will understand uh, India's concerns. Mm. John Bolton is very hard on Iran, so that's a different matter altogether. Okay. We'll, we'll talk about Iran as well probably later on in the program and try and bring that in and see if uh, we'll get a waiver as far as Iran is concerned as well. But I'm going to go back to what K.V. Prasad said, uh, Ambassador Sajanari was talking about uh, U.S. Defense Secretary James Mattis and what he said to the senators. In fact, he said, any U.S. sanctions on India would have put the relationship back at least a decade, if not more, and the senators listened to him. Uh, so what does it tell us about India-U.S. ties? You know, what tells us, uh, Frank, is very clearly, you know, if you go back, let us say, about 10, 15 years ago, and uh, I draw your attention to the fact, uh, exactly the beginning of the second term of President uh, uh, George Bush, and there he had sent his then Secretary of State, Condoleezza Rice, and she had come in February of 2005 and she'd gone back and she said that the main objective of the United States is to ensure the emergence of India as a major global power. And I think as things have evolved, particularly now we see the rise of China and the aggressiveness and the assertiveness of China in the South China Sea as far as the Belt and Road Initiative is concerned and as far as the United States is concerned, particularly as far as the trade war is concerned. Mm. So there are a number of areas where uh, the United States finds that it has to contend with China, it has to confront China. And as far as this is uh, the United States is concerned, there is no other partner for the United States better than India that can stand along with it. So I think it is in the interest of the United States itself to ensure that India keeps on growing both economically, militarily, strategically. And that is why, you know, you said you will come to Iran. But whether it is Chabahar or it is oil imports, and we are seeing that we are, uh, you know, very likely to get a carve out an exception from the United States on both these things. Chabahar, of course, had earlier also been mentioned that we would be able to get it because it is in the interest of United States that we are able to reach Afghanistan, 
to promote its security, its stability and its economic prosperity. We have already started uh, sending uh, wheat to that and also use this route to reach out to the Central Asian countries right. which so are coming so it's through. So strategic importance For is what strategic you're saying. Yes. Importance. Right. And so uh, the United States recognizes and realizes the importance of India and the fact that it needs to work together with India to make sure that uh, you know there is a sort of balance and for the betterment of its own interests at absolutely, the end of the day absolutely absolutely <laughs> uh, kv prasad uh, is this waiver now a boost for india us ties we've seen a bit of a lull between ties between the two countries now is this a boost really well i think uh, there was if if at all a, i wouldn't say it was a, a little bit of a downward dip that's because of the post uh, katsa passage and the kind of expression that were uh, conveyed by the administration to when, whenever their officials came to India. But the fact, as uh, was pointed out in the panel, India enjoys a bipartisan support on the Hill. But I would like, there's a caveat here, is the, uh, the mood on the capital here is not exactly very friendly towards Russia even now, and especially mm. in the post-Helsinki summit. The, if you look at the kind of reportage that's been happening there, people, uh, even President uh, Trump had to kind of revisit and re-announce whatever he's made in Helsinki. So the Republicans are under a lot of pressure and with the elections entering uh, the, the, uh, the uh, uh, November cycle coming in for the midterm elections. And a statement by President Trump himself saying that he thinks the Russians will uh, support the Democrats. So you see there's a lot of churning that's happening there. Uh, but that should not really matter because once the conference call is taken, there's a mere technicality where both houses will have to agree to what uh, the conference call uh, conference has uh, decided and goes for presidential assent. Uh, of course, uh, as I said, the Indo-US uh, ties have been strong, but under President Trump, they have been more transactional rather than strategic. Right. You know, um, Alok Bansal, uh, is the strategic partnership between India and the United States back on track now? Appears to, because we are hearing that 2 plus 2 meet is also going to take place on 6th of September. Mm, 6th of because September, its yes. uh, deferment itself uh, was a, a little bit of setback, whatever may have been the reasons. Because the media was speculating that this is actually uh, some sort of a downturn, which has actually resulted in that deferment. But I think we sh seem to be back on track. And if, as Ambassador Sajjanhar said, that if we can get a waiver for Iranian oil import, that to my mind will be a very, very big issue. Because... Uh, Russia and Iran are two different uh, fishes of two different cattle as far as President Trump is concerned. Because as far as Trump administration is concerned, it's going hammer and tongs at Iran. Uh, but at the same time, let me clarify that our dependence on Iran is not as much as far as for oil imports is concerned. Chabahar, we have, I think we have already managed to get a waiver. Uh, I think uh, they have, there has been an in-principle approval that Chabahar development will not be impeded or something like that. But oil imports as far as it's concerned, though China, uh, Iran has again became, become second largest source of India's oil imports, but it's considerably lower than what we import from Iraq. Hmm. And what we need to understand that say, say about 10 years back, uh, Iran was still our second largest import uh, source of import, but Saudi Arabia was the largest. So Saudi Arabia, which has the huge production capacity, is actually now come dip to number three, has that enormous capacity that whatever loss we suffer from Iran, we can actually compensate. So there will be monetarily some loss because Iran actually uh, uh, subsidizes its oil by actually uh, waiving off insurance and freight charges. I think that would be the case. And... Uh, Let's see how this strategic partnership goes further. Uh, 2 plus 2, I think, uh, would take uh, a full call on how do we proceed from here. Right. Because of the three countries, Russia has been resolved. I think Iran is another issue. We hardly have any issues as far as North Korea is concerned. <laughs> right. Yes, Ambassador Sajnath, you want to say yeah, something? Yeah, very quickly, a very small point. You know, we are discussing whether uh, India-US relations are on track. My submission would be that they never went off track. Mm. They have always been on track. I think this uh, uh, thinking that the 2 plus 2 postponement means that there is, uh, uh, you know, declining interest as far as U.S. is concerned in India relations. I don't think... Was that, that only in the media? Was that is only that. I think that's a buildup of the media that is okay. not factually inaccurate. And I can give you at least 10 instances of developments that have taken place you know, whether it is change of, you know, the whole narrative around Indo-Pacific. 
चेंज ऑफ दैसेफिक कमांड टू इंडो पैसेफिक रीस्टार्ट ऑफ द क्वाड नेगोसिएशन ऑफ द क्वाड डिलिब्रेशन अमंगस्ट द ऑफिशियल्स ऑफ दीज फोर कंट्रीज द यू एस साउथ एशिया स्ट्रैटेजी दैट हैज बीन द प्रेशर दैट हैज बीन पुट ऑन पाकिस्तान यू नो दैट इज ऑल गोइंग टूवर्ड्स वॉट वी हैव बीन आस्किंग एग्जाम्पल्स अबाउंड इज वॉट यूर एग्जाम्पल दैट दे हैव बीन ऑन ट्रैक एंड दे आर गेटिंग स्ट्रॉगर एम्बेसडर शर्मा यू नो एज फार एज द टू प्लस two dialogue is concerned is it on track this time do you think will we finally have the 2 plus 2 dialogue on september 6th after several postponements well you know i i have always maintained uh, that these postponements were genuinely uh, related to the exigencies of the uh, the protocol you know like the secretary of state had to go to north korea and had to go to moscow that's why he couldn't have come so it was just a mere scheduling problem it was scheduling what you're problem and okay. uh, our media um, our media run, runs off you know at a tangent so hopefully this should work out but you know these but what's uh, going to be on the table do you think when 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 you know the 2+2 uh, dialogue does indeed take place well you know the there are many other dimensions the very format is indicative of a, a strategic dialogue because it this kind of a dialogue happens with only J- with japan with no one else hmm. and with india this uh, secretary of state and defense meeting with uh, with our, our raksha mantri and minister of external affairs is is the forum itself is very important this has been talked about for last several years first it was at the secretary level that this kind of 2 plus 2 was happening now it is at this level so it is elevation second the the confluence of our interest both in uh, in external affairs and defense is uh, very much uh, the agenda and uh, we have found over the uh, you know last uh, two years uh, since the trump administration came that on certain areas where we have to take a position we've explained it very clearly that look we have to take this position we may not agree with you here but it does not mean uh, that our strategic uh, confluence uh, is eroded so i think this is the place where we can explain that we have to take we have to take certain decision just as they have to take certain decisions and so our uh, strategic uh, autonomy you know the word has also been misinterpreted by our media but this is the requirement of a big country right. that it decides to have relations with uh, you know with major powers in its own right and uh, the their interlocutors should understand this hmm. so this will be another occasion for us to remove any uh, you know cobwebs in this direction so sure. and uh, the third thing is that there are many things on the on the uh, agenda like these important weapon systems and uh, i personally personally feel that there are certain areas in advanced technologies where india and the us should now push forward that defense technology trade initiative we should push forward in that direction because there so are many the things so time is ripe right now is what you're suggesting yeah this is the place this is the time when we have strong leaderships and okay. we should move forward okay closing comments now from all my guests so let's come back to katsa now uh, ambassador sajina uh, india will have to meet two conditions is what the contra is the what is what the us congressional conference report has said one that india has significant has to significantly reduce dependence on russia or two it has to significantly increase cooperation with united states can this be done i think it's already been done the way we see uh you know relations between uh, uh united states and india evolving and emerging for instance if you were to look just at uh, defense uh, cooperation you know not not even going into dtti the defense trade and technology initiative uh just about 5 years ago we were importing about 2.4 percent of our uh, defense requirements from uh, the united states today it has increased to about 15 percent our uh, orders with them are to the tune of about 16 billion dollars as far as the first condition is concerned 5 years ago in the first 5 year bracket we were d- our dependence on russia was to the tune of 79% of mm. our defense imports today it is just about 62% right. so i think the united states uh, has increased very significantly and continuing to grow and as far as russia is concerned it has come down very significantly so india is meeting these conditions uh, very well and of course in addition to that there is the whole strategic uh, element in the bilateral right uh, kv prasad does this also now clear the way for the 
S-400 deal with Russia and also probably some more deals with Russia in, in the time in the time. Well, I think there is a limited waiver and a, a very clearly S-400 seems to be on track and uh, the timelines are closing in for India to uh, go and sign on the dotted line with the Russians. That is, uh, the, that's the direction it's moving. But uh, we'll have to see as we go along, as I said, there are several factors that will keep going as we go along. The elections, as I said, is an important factor in the United States and of course, uh, our own election cycle begins. So this is where it moves. So the elections will have a bearing on ties between India and the United States is what you're suggesting at this point in time. Uh, uh, Ambassador Shilkan Sharma, we heard what Ambassador Sajanhar and uh, Mr. Alok Bansal had to say about Iran. Your thoughts on uh, India-Iran ties. Do you believe that we can get a carve out as far as Iran is concerned? No, it's a, it's a bigger uphill task for us. Uh, given the strong uh, prejudices against Iran uh, among the team members of um, President Trump and his, his own uh, predilections. Uh, but so it depends, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, up in the air, we have to try and convince them. And uh, the, the way the events have moved like these, uh, this diatribe between President Trump and Rouhani, mm. and you see when Rouhani has started talking like that, it shows a certain pressure on Iran. Because Rouhani was considered a moderate, but the, the, the mother of wars and all that stuff. Now, that kind of a language is not acceptable to President Trump. All the other major powers realize this, so no one uses language which will uh, irritate uh, President Trump. Mm. Iran, somehow or the other, has been uh, uh, maintaining a restraint. But this recent thing has again uh, flared up, you know, this kind of a diatribe. Right. So that is not good, you know. Sure. And if things go bad uh, with Iran and the U.S. And, and things go bad in the Middle East, then regardless of our dealings, mm. uh, the, the physical situation in the Gulf, in the Persian Gulf, will be such that our trade and our tra you know, all these things will be affected. Right. So it is not in our interest. It is not in our interest at the end of the day. Alok Bansal, close the show for us with your concluding remarks on the way forward for India-U.S. ties. I think the way is very brighter. I think one of the biggest factors which we need to understand is that the Indian diaspora has actually come of age. And Indian diaspora's rise in United States actually will ensure, whether we like it or not, that the Indo-US relations will keep rising. And uh, this is how it has manifest. Actually, if you see under Trump administration, uh, as Ambassador Shil Khan Sharma said, as far as prejudices against Iran is concerned, actually these prejudices emanate from the Jewish lobby. In fact, uh, President Trump is speaking Israel's language as far as Iran is concerned. And similarly, I think Indian diaspora is, the, I think, today the as powerful uh, diaspora in US as the Jewish diaspora is, if not uh, uh, more. And I think uh, slowly or certainly, I think the US uh, would support India's cause. From India's point of view, as far as India, Indo-US cooperation is concerned, we are actually growing. Uh, it is going to increase, as Ambassador Sajjanhar said. As far as India-Russia uh, relationship is concerned, I, I don't think so. it's coming down. But in percentages term, yes, it will come down. Uh, uh, to my mind, uh, Indian dependence on Russia as far as defense sector is concerned will remain at least for a decade, if not more. And to that extent, uh, I, it's actually a nuanced statement. Yes, we'll reduce our re reliance on Russia. And I think uh, the congressional uh, conditionalities also, uh, it's not a substantive issue, but it's actually a relative issue where we say, yes, relatively. We can work around reduce. it. It's not a problem. You have it's to work a, around it. Yeah. I think we yeah. can work around right. it. OK, all it's right. Just on, to satisfy them. All right. On that note, then we'll call it a wrap on this edition of The Big Picture. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us. What's coming out of this debate is that the India-US ties were never uh, uh, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in a state of bother. In fact, it was. Uh, done by the media and it was media hype that suggested that the relationship was strained. The relationship is on the right path and it's headed towards better times ahead is what the panelists are suggesting. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of The Big Picture. See you again next time.